This is Alan with the Toon Army Baltimore. A gooner and a toffee walk into a bar. Decide to do a shit football podcast. You're listening to the DU Football Show. I wouldn't say he's wrong, necessarily. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's harsh, but, you know, it's kind of true. Yeah, I'll take that. You know, well, at least Mike Rogers thinks we're shit, so. Yeah, well, that's all I need in this world. <laughs> it really is all we need. <laughs> you know what? You know what the other nice thing is, kids? What's that? It's a Malort-free show. Hey! I might just do one because I'm depressed. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. No begging shots. <laughs> oh, Sammy, that's a journey we're apparently going to take together. Let's start the show! Hello and welcome to the Drunkard United Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me is the uh, uh, emotional-laden... Samuel Graham? Yeah. <laughs> Full of emotion. Been a bit of day, huh? It's been a terrible day. Been a terrible day. Well, terrible see, day. you're you're with me now and we're going to talk soccer and you're going to have fun and you're going to drink oh, real fuck good whiskey tonight yeah, too. So it is good. We'll be all right. Oh, we're recording at Studio H just outside our nation's capital. You can check us out on just about any podcast platform you can think of, including uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Radio Public, uh, iHeartRadio, all those fun ones. YouTube? Yep, YouTube as well. Um, and uh, just remember to rate, subscribe, review, keep sharing. I keep seeing everybody uh, retweeting on uh, on Twitter. Really appreciate it. And, uh, of course, should you want to chat with us, there's many ways that you can. Sammy, why don't you tell the good people how they can get in touch? Sure. We're at Do You Football Show uh, on all the social medias. It's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then uh, Do You Football Show at gmail.com um, to get in touch via email. Uh, also, on the closed group, um, Drunkard United FC on Facebook is a great way to get in touch. And anything uh, that we post up uh, asking for questions or st- you know stuff like that, we will take those comments as questions as well, uh, even though we've addressed them in the group. So um, if you want to get involved, that's a couple of ways you can do so. It's pretty fantastic. Um, Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So as the red-blooded Americans we are, we vow to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every show. Sammy, we drink at a home run tonight. Tell the people what we're sipping on. Uh, We are drinking a Midwinter Night's Dram. Uh, This is Act 7, Scene 1. It is the 16-year-old Rendezvous Rye finished in port barrels that happen to be made of French oak. Um, It's normally a late autumn release each year uh, and has won Whiskey Advocate's Whiskey of the Year before. Um, typically, <clears throat> excuse me, it's typically one of the most sought after, uh, American whiskey releases of the year, uh, $99.99 to $119.99 on the shelf. Uh, but it can fetch up to $500 on the secondary market because there's so little of it made. Um, and so little of it shipped out, uh, comes in at 98.6 proof. And, um, with that being said, ladies and gents. Remember to drink responsibly. Holy shit, he remembered to read his notes. Wow. The, that the, might be the first time ever you got it at the exact right spot at the exact right time. I drew an arrow. Good job, oh. Sammy. Very good. Sammy can yeah. draw. Um, you now, can now have a drink. Now, the only, the only thing you missed there, Sam, hey, thanks, is, Mel. You're welcome. is that this <laughs> is from the uh, High West Distillery. Okay. Out in Park City, Utah. I literally wrote every word down you told me, so you didn't okay. say it. Okay. Oh, oh, so yeah. I'm the keeper of you now, huh? Yeah. Okay, Wait, I mean, let me read I the, c- remember to say drink you. responsibly, you fucking tool. See, yeah. that that was in your notes too. Yeah. Y- you know, we have If it only re- it was that simple <laughs> that you actually did everything I fucking told you to. If we, that was really the we case. We do have it recorded cuz I recorded sound check for a Patreon subscribers Ooh, so yes. we can go back and check the tape if you don't believe them. Let's uh, go to the videotape. <laughs> one one would think I tell him it's the Midwinter Night Stram and he would go, "Oh yeah, from High West," but you know, Clearly, um, We're just with Graham is incapable of uh, Cheers, keeping Graham. up on that. Cheers, man. Um, also, don't forget, oh, kids. Is he still talking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> to I'm talking about the important shit. You got to <laughs> save the date, December the 15th. Ooh. Ask Jesus for Sunday off for anybody who goes to church. Um, DU live show, up close and drunk, 9 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Monument Brewing. Come hang out, catch a couple of matches, including my team and Sam's team, both playing the Manchesters, and um, play some fun games in between the games, in between the half times and everything, and uh, win a bunch of fun prizes and drink some really kick ass beer. Yeah, it's going to be a QA, going to be some, yeah, like Sam said, some fun games. Um, we have some giveaways. Uh oh. So mm-hmm. come check that out. Uh, and also, 
with that, I have promised Monument that I will drink a beer of theirs on this show up until uh, we do that show. Absolutely. I was so, wondering which one you were going to be drinking today. Yeah, so tonight I've got Monument City's uh, Lamp Lighter, uh, which is their Imperial Porter. Ooh, let me try that one. Yep. Hold on. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me, everybody. Sounds oh, like sex. That does sound good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, behind behind the microphones. Delicious. Uh, yes, you can buy one producer, producer Mel, Mel one of those beers on December fifteenth. Yeah, because producer Mel is a huge porter fan. For yep. those of you who do not, not know. as bitter as a, a regular English style porter, mm-hmm. um, but it does have that nice little bitterness at the end. A lot of toffee up front. Um, I like that one. Uh, yeah, it's excellent. Good little beer. Nine point two percent. I, I, I'm drinking Ice House. So if you're trying to get rid of, you know, a bad football team's performance, this is a great way to go. Oh, that'll make it go away real quick. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Let's get into it, kids. Have no, a great show. You we, all already toasted once. We Let's, already cheers. We're on the well, way. Catch up, Sammy. <laughs> Whores, both of you. <laughs> Don't you have a mute button you can be fucking hitting right now? Jesus. All righty. So um, we're going to do it a little different, Sam. We're just going to kind of take some stories from uh, what's been going on over the past week. And also, we got a few questions from uh, listeners as well. So we're just going to kind of freeform it tonight, if you don't mind. Yeah, I didn't even write notes because we were doing that. Uh, this is straight off the dome piece. All right. Well, we're going to go me. ahead. Well, sh- shocker. Guess what topic we're starting with first? PG Mole? The fucking VAR, <laughs> dumbass. So, um, yes, the um, PGML oh, <laughs> and the uh, Premier League need uh, met to discuss their uh, issues with VAR so far. Um, they reached an agreement that VAR needs to be faster, needs to have better consistency, and needs to communicate better with the fans in the stadium. Um, now, they're claiming that they're going to use the screen more, that the refs are actually going to go to the monitor and look at the screen. If they do it once, that will be more than they've done it this entire season thus far. Yeah, ever. Yeah. Is it? Maybe it's not plugged in. It is. It's lit up. No, Arlo White even said, look, they're plugged in on uh, national TV. Thank you very much. Yeah, they showed it. International TV. (laughs) Yeah, so you have um, things like they were going to start saying that VAR is checking for a handball or VAR is checking for offsides when it comes to a goal so that then the fans in the stands actually know what the hell's going on. Right. Um, Because for us, as uh, as we're watching the game on TV, we know right away because, well, the commentators are talking about it. But apparently in the stadium, they have no idea. The the commentary is guessing. Obviously, they have a pretty good look at it. They're watching replays themselves. So they're guessing to what the referees are because technically they don't know either. They're right. not privy to the conversation between the ref and the VAR, and it's not on the screen in the stadium anyway. So there, it's conjecture at this point. But as you say, it'll say VAR checking penalty, and then underneath of it now will say four handball or four push or whatever. Right. Or VAR checking for foul previously in buildup or whatever. So a little bit more information. Still not going to get a replay in stadium. That way, the fans cannot get on the back of the referee and try to influence a decision. Right, which is what happens in the NFL all the time. Right, and so right now, all you're getting is the generic fuck VAR. <clears throat> right, the entire time. Yep. Um, do you think this is going to help at all? No, not a chance. Um, so I had told Unless you... Unless they actually go to the screen. So I had told you a few weeks ago, um, I said I think the refs are bottling it. Um, yep. I think, uh, I mean, a little conspiracy theory of mine... Um, but I think that the refs are actually putting it in a situation where they're making sure that VAR, VAR fails. They're not making the call on the field because they want to put the pressure to back to this the, the studio where the VAR is being done because they want to sit there and go, well, not my fault. You all told me VAR. My, my, hand, my hands are dry. Right. I have nothing to do with this. Exactly. I didn't make the call. I'm, I'm letting VAR make that decision. You all said the VAR is going to take care of everything. So... You know, I I almost feel like they're purposely fucking like, well, purposely just not doing anything. Right. Because they just want to let the VAR sort it all out. Right. And then the referees want the that are in the VAR room want their own authority when they're on the pitch and that guy's in the VAR room. Right. So say yeah. you're Mike Dean and you're ref in this game and I'm Kevin Friend and I'm the VAR. I don't want to step on your toes because when the roles reversed, I don't want you stepping on mine. Right. Right. 
So then the VAR doesn't do shit. Then neither of them have done anything. And the, the decisions have gotten worse. I, Can I just say one thing? Sure. Fuck Kevin Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the mute button. Thank you. Um, so the... I'm I'm wondering also as well with with VAR. If here. Jack Grealish dove that day, yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck you too. <laughs> Sorry, that's right. a dig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, <laughs> the the th- my my thought here with um with VAR and using the television screen is they're also claiming that they're going to be faster at doing it, so. Is the ref going to immediately run over to the screen the minute that there's a VAR situation, or are they just going to st- are they just going to stand there and continue to just listen on their ear? And unless it's like minute and they need to go look at it, they'll then they'll right. go look at it. Yeah, I feel like there wasn't in the World Cup when this was like implemented full stop. Right? Yeah, they executed very quickly. There were still I've, issues, but they executed. I quickly. feel like it was executed quickly. I feel like. That was more of a problem in the language of the law as opposed to VAR itself. A la goal kick handball. Right. With that situation, we talked about it nauseam. Yeah. Um, If the referee thinks that there's a VAR decision, and in my opinion, if it directly leads to a goal, if it's a subjective decision, the referee needs to go look at it. Or else, for me, they're re-refereeing the game or his authority is being undermined. Mm -hmm. Right? If it's an objective decision... Something factual, like offsides, VAR can handle it. He doesn't need to go look at anything. Right. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I, I think the handballs is what they need to look at. Mike Riley, by the way, um, the head of the uh, PGMLOL. Um, PG Mole. PG Mole. Um, the, <laughs> he came out and said that uh, the Alexander Arnold hand, handball wasn't a handball and get over it, was basically his well, response. Apparently, there was a deflection off Bernardo Silva. As he was running in, there was a deflection mm-hmm. off of him, and then it took it into Alexander Arnold's hand. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> well, it's, let's also face it. They wrote the rule a certain way. It's black and white, except for when it's Liverpool, and then it's okay. Well, no, it's hit <laughs> defenders' hands before. Yeah, but and remember. Ha- it hasn't been called. Right, but remember, the writing of the rule now is, doesn't matter if it's intentional or unintentional. I think that's if only for offensive a, players. No, defensive as well. Yeah, defensive as well. That is the universal handball rule. So, but you know, again, it's just kind of funny that that you would come out and be that definitive. And I mean, it was almost flippant. The I, I heard some of the interview, and it was just this kind of like, "What? What do you mean? Of course that wasn't a handball. Get over it." Like, wow, okay, you know, that's a pretty pretty controversial fucking call. Like, you probably oh, yeah. shouldn't be that dismissive about it. No, absolutely, especially considering that Liverpool scored thirty seconds fucking later. Yeah, you're the face of 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 a system that is under fire. Perhaps one should not be so flippant in the uh, in the way that they uh, look at things. So, what what do you think? Do you think? Um, do you have any agreement with me as thinking that maybe the refs are just bottling it because they just want their hands to be clean of it and they figure let it fuck up on its own? Or, or what's your thoughts? I don't know that you can call into question the integrity of the referees. They're still going to be evaluated at the end of the season as to how they're performing. Right. And the amount of games they get is based on that performance, right? So it's affecting their livelihood if they don't perform to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I'm prepared to say that they're bottling it intentionally. (coughs) However, there's no question that they're bottling it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And as I said, I don't know if it's just that awkward English gentlemanly thing where they don't want to be rude to one another or don't want their authority undermined when they're in the opposite situation. Right. Because inevitably, you as Mike Dean are going to be in the VAR room when I, Kevin Friend, am on the field, right? Yeah. That's going to happen at some point. So do I want to say, hey, Mike, Dino, you're wrong. You cunt. You fucked up, right? And then I'm on the field, and Dino, loving a shit show, loving a scrap, is going to yell in my ear the same thing. I'd be interested to see if they would release some of the uh, audio. I, like they do of, in rugby. I don't see a problem with that. Well, they've done that also a few times with, um, with you know, ref on the field talking to the players and stuff like that. I would think that might actually be a good tool to actually exp- have people have a better understanding of exactly what the hell's yeah, going on. Now, even- now, granted, they don't know us shit. We're just, we are just the viewing audience. We are just fans. But 
it would shed some light on what the on what the current situation is. I just think they don't want to. Uh, I just think, Sammy, they don't want to bother doing it because um, you know they clearly know that VAR is just a tool to make sure that Liverpool wins the title. All right, before you work us into the next segment, okay. I pulled up the handball rule for this season. Okay. Any goal scored or created with the use of a hand or arm will be disallowed this season, even if it's accidental. So, Laporte. Right. Handball. Never mind that he was fouled first. Handball, right. <laughs> right. But handball because Jesus scored directly off that. So, then the handball rule has extra now has extra clarity because it does not consider intent by a player. So that's supposed to make it extra clear. <laughs> right. Because it doesn't matter the intent. Because, wow, it's been clear. Right. So clear. Another sure. big change is due, is to do with the position of a player's hand or arm if the ball hits a player who has made their body unnaturally bigger. Which, with that wording, I say to you, if I can put my arm in that position, it's completely fucking natural. Right. I'm not the exorcist here, right? I can't go swinging around weird shit. If I can move my hand there, it's natural, right? Right. You know, the way Deli Ali protects his head from, uh, you know, the ball hitting. Yeah, his head. but I'm saying that's an, obviously a natural motion. We can do it. We're both doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> how, is it, how can it be unnatural if we can do it? <laughs> Heard. I think there's usually a pill involved to make it unnaturally bigger. Hey, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's pretty good. I was gonna say Andre Gome- uh, Andres Gomez's leg was uh, in an unnatural position. Yes, that would that's be for an goddamn unnatural sure. position. Um, uh, the IFAB says that having a hand or arm above the shoulder height is rarely a natural position, and a player is taking a risk uh, by having a hand or arm in that position, including when sliding. What am I doing currently? Raising your hand. That felt pretty fucking natural. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> question. Uh, uh, it is, however, considered natural for a player to put their arm between their body and the ground for support when falling, so long as that arm is not extended to make the body bigger. So, I guess you can't fall with your arm out at 45 degrees. You can only <laughs> fall with your arm directly below yeah, you. Exactly. I guess. Uh, deflections. Premier League players will um, be allowed extra leeway when it comes to ricocheted handballs. It is often impossible to avoid contact with the ball if it is deflected off the body of an opponent, teammate, or even another part of the own player. So a handball will not be awarded if the ball touches a player's hand or arm directly from their own head, foot, body, uh, or the head, body, foot of another player who is close or nearby. So, technically, if the ball actually hit Bernardo Silva, which I couldn't tell from that replay, to be honest with you, Uh if that actually happened... That falls within the pure purview of this law. Most of the fuck ups that have happened, though, in regards to handball, have not. <laughs> Very true. All right, on to the next story. Very good. Thank you. Nice crack researching there. Uh, admin. Great job at admin, Grammy. Slightly okay. Live at that. I have my iPad here. So, I'll just um, take a picture for everybody to see it. <laughs> um, international Break loves to bring along bullshit stories. And we got one involving Everton. Um, for Moisa Ken, who. Uh, Apparently, a strange father has gone to the press claiming that uh, his son already wants to leave Goodison and that his 12 matches at Goodison has already been a failure and he needs to move on. Now, mind you, I said estranged father. Right. He has no relationship with Moise <laughs> Ken. Right. But, 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 he know, apparently. And, and also, apparently, the newspaper thinks, hmm, this is you don't person. talk to your yeah. son? Credible source. <laughs> Right. Um, this is a lot like the Ainsley Maitland-Niles uh, thing where him and his mom are estranged, and she was apparently found to be living in a storage locker. Yeah. Yeah. I. If anything, for me, this is a failure from Ever- from not Everton themselves. This is a failure from Roberto, not Roberto Silva. Jesus fucking Marco Christ. Silva. Marco Silva. I got your two bosses ago mixed up. <laughs> Heard. Um, this is a failure from him because he hasn't used him. Yeah. He's no, he that, hasn't used them very he's much. He's the one that's dropped the ball. Okay. Why Why not give the guy a start? When you were on that slide, why not give the guy a start, see what he can do? Because 10-minute cameos aren't working. Mm-hmm. So let's try to get him out there for 30 minutes, for 60 minutes, for 90 minutes. He's done that a let's few times. Let's see what he can actually also, do. He put him on the right, and that didn't work out too well, and he pulled him. He's just center know, forward. You know, I, I say the biggest thing you have to remember in all of this is he's a 19-year-old kid. Yeah, I don't think he's played enough football yet. <laughs> 
I mean, I know he tore it up in Italy, but I don't think he's played enough football yet to to warrant calling him a failure yet. You're right, precisely. At all. Not not even close. Right, uh, precisely. And and also, um, last week he was removed from the bench because he was uh, late to a team meeting, which, again, you expect a coach to remove you from the bench when that happens. Yep. You And especially at that age, kid needs to learn a, loop, a rule or two. We are again forgetting... He is a boy. I mean, technically, he's over eighteen, and he's a he's an adult, but he's a fucking boy. Yeah, there, there there's going to be trials and tribulations with with kids of that age, absolutely, especially with as much money as they make. And at Mario Balotelli lit fireworks fireworks off in his house. Remember in his bathroom. Yep. There's kids do dumb shit, especially rich kids. Yeah. Uh, he's he's... Gonna, things are gonna happen. It, it's just, you know, a level of maturity that a lot of 19-year-olds don't have. And the English press and some others like to run along with the fact that they're black or, you know, what have you. This is yeah. all 19-year-olds. I don't care where you are. Right, exactly. This is all 19-year-olds fuck up and do dumb shit. I do my fair share of stupid shit now. Right. At 33 years old. Right. Oh, so, and, and also, you know, certain newspapers will... Uh, write more towards one team in town, like be more of a Liverpool paper or Absolutely. more of an Everton paper. Yeah. And they'll throw out bullshit stories just to fuck with the other team. Oh, 100%. I mean, look at La Marca and, um, and I can't remember the Barcelona paper off the top. It might be like the Barcelona Telegraph or something. But look at La Marca is essentially the mouthpiece of Real Madrid. Right. You know, they have maybe a quarter of one page a story on Barcelona and it's normally fucking with them and 16 pages of coverage of Real Madrid. Right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? But it's a credible source. I, yeah. I, there's Just leave the kid alone. Let him develop. Let him play. He's he's already come out and said, hey, my father doesn't speak for me. And, right. You know, and I, I'm, like I'm, I said, I, th- I think he deserved a couple of games in the team to see what he could really do. Give yeah. him a run. Get Let him develop a relationship with some of the players around him and see what happens. I think the time for that was when you guys were on your slide. So I think yeah. um, Marco Silva dropped the ball a little bit. But uh, I'd in, agree in, to that. In I'd that regard. That. Well, you're not winning, so try yeah. something new. Yeah. Why, why not? You know what I mean? So um, I, it's well too early to, to worry about whether or not this kid's a failure yet. I imagine the kid's going to play quite a bit in right. December. Yeah, so think- Everybody has a shit ton of games in December. You start to go, you start to rely on that bench quite a bit. So don't Absolutely. be surprised if you see him play a few but games. You also think you've got, right, he came from Juventus. Yeah. And no offense. You're no Juventus. You're probably, no, you're so absolutely right. You've got Cristiano Ronaldo last season for the first time on one side. You've got fucking uh, Paolo Dybala on the other side. You've got um, you know people running through the middle. Blaise Matuidi uh, was still there. Uh, was there? Mm-hmm. You had um, who else? A lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people there. I well, can't think of any other Juve players off the top of my head for whatever reason. Entry. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you had a rock solid defense, so you had a much more free role. I mean, even in your team right now, Richarlison, when he plays through the middle, is still defending from the front. Right. You know, they didn't do that at Juve. Right. He had right. a free. He could run around, do whatever he wanted to. You know what I mean? It's not fair to 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 label this kid at 19 years old in a brand new fucking country, trying to understand understand a Portuguese guy, a very different league as a, well. A, right, different style of play. It, everybody talks scouse. <clears throat> Which I'm surprised if he could figure out how to order a fucking coffee in that town. <laughs> and then, you know, you've got a Portuguese manager with a certain style of play that may or may not fit the league, and that's up for debate somewhere else. So what are you, what are you going to – let the let the kid be. I forget the uh, – Let English, him be. I forget the English comedian's name. Um, he's known for uh, doing roast battles. Uh, Jim something. Um, uh, uh, um, the smaller guy looks very kind of – British and unassuming kind right. of in a way, yeah. But he always does all the different accents. And for Scouser, he always says, "All you have to do to learn how to say Scouser is say, I want a chicken and a can of Coke.' <laughs> yeah, chicken and a can of Coke, <laughs> <laughs> and then you could speak Scouser as long as you <laughs> stick to chicken and a can of Coke. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right, so we've got some uh, questions here from uh, from some listeners. So um, first one I'm going to throw at you. Yeah, that whiskey is really fucking good, isn't it, Sammy? I see you mm-hmm. eyeing it up. It is yummy. You need a little bit more there, killer? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, hold on one second here. Let's priorities. Definite priorities. 
All right, so um, got to grease the wheels a bit, as they say. All right, so um, first question comes from Paul from uh, uh, the Houston Wolves, uh, who's been on the show a few times with us. Um, he actually tweeted this, and he said, "Which is worse for the royal family, the recent Prince Andrew controversy, or that Prince William chose to be a Villa supporter?" Whoa, 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 whoa! Definitely Villa supporter, right, Sam? Foul on the play. I don't know. Prince Andrew was. <laughs> I mean, Prince Andrew was friends with Epstein, so... He was talking about a, a pedophile. I mean, he might have killed and him. And never once listened... Never once... I'm um, Not listened. Never once mentioned the victims and how bad he felt for them or so sorry this happened or anything. Right. Kind of just made it all about himself, like usual. Um, <laughs> we don't really expect much different from Prince Andrew. Sam, <coughs> and this goes to both of you, correct my math, but... Has Aston Villa won twenty trophies? Uh, so I would say they're thereabouts. To, yeah, they're about thirteen that the Wolves have won. I mean, through the seventies, Villa were a massive, massive club. I like my chances better with Aston Villa than the Wolves, and <laughs> I was uh, actually looking up a good story about Prince William and what made him become an Aston Villa fan. And one of the things he liked was when he was in school, all of his buds were either you know Man or Chelsea fans, and he didn't want a quote run of the mill team. I don't even think Wolves was on his radar. And he kind of liked how the emotional roller coaster and the history and the passion of the Villa Club. So, long story short, go fuck yourself, Paul. Just kidding. Hit the mute button. Kinda. Mute button. All the mute button. So much mute button. <laughs> no, do not even unmute it. Leave it muted. Uh, mute. It's hovering. Wolves is, mute. Only, Wolves is only three years younger than Villa. I would have expected it to be more. Um, hmm. No, Wolves, Wolves was one of the uh, 18, original eight. 1877, Villa was 1874 yeah. that they were founded. Yeah, and Everton, 1878. Yeah. They're all, they're all, all three of those are part of are the part original, of the original eight. eight. Yeah, yeah, the original eight. So, very good question. And like that, that was kind of ball busting and fun. I would have to go with Prince Andrew was worse. Okay, official. Yeah, yeah, that should be the official line for the entire show. Okay, Pr Houston. Prince, Prince Andrew. Although clever and great dig, <laughs> fabulous Mel, dig. Yes. All right, so pedophilia is bad, and a mention goes out to the victims because we're not on Prince Andrew's level. Heard, very good. So um, <laughs> we also got um, three. I'm questions. not laughing at that either. Jesus Christ! Now I don't know what to do. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just walk away, Sammy. Walk away. Let me go into the next question, and it'll all what be is, fine. What does the Queen say? Never. What does she say? Never explain. Never apologize. Never explain, or something like that. I think that's it. Never explain and never apologize. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, you just did both. <laughs> right, correct. All right, next. All right, so Russ actually uh, got three questions, uh, but they're all good ones, so I want to do all three of them that kind of uh, go along with the season so far. So first one, what club, going off the current rankings on the table, will make the biggest move up and the biggest move down before the end of this calendar year? Hmm. What do you think? Um, move up just by default. I would figure either West Ham or Tottenham. Um, I'd say Everton, but Everton has a real tough schedule in there. But also let it be known, you know, you're talking between... Is this end of the calendar year? End of the calendar year. Oh, okay. Coming through d December here. Um, you know, getting through the December months. Um, now, but from fifth place to... I'm sorry, from sixth place to... 16th place you're talking five points difference in the table three yeah i mean it's it's insane three three points different uh sorry four points difference from six yeah because arsenal's in six on 17 uh <laughs> villa are in 17th on 11 so a six point difference to the to six. seventh to 17th place <laughs> from Pardon six me. to yeah. 17 to six yeah um, I would We're think closer to the bottom of the table than we are the top. It's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Like, like I said, I I would think I would think um, West Ham and Tottenham are probably the more likely to make a bigger move up the table. Absolutely. Um, as I said Everton's got a real tough schedule coming up, so I don't. I mean, I just I don't see them making a big push up. They'll get some points in there, but I don't see them. You know. Yeah, I I would have to agree. It's got to be either 14th, 15th, or 16th, and that's Tottenham, Everton, West Ham. Yeah, that's that's um, who that's who that's going to make the biggest move. I think oh. Aston Villa is going to climb a little bit. 
Um, West Ham is all really going to depend on if Fabianski comes back. Yeah, they desperately um, need him. For, for the most part, just instill some confidence and breathe some life back into that team. Hold on one second. Uh, Chris has kindly asked us to not discuss West Ham this week, as it would be too shameful. Well, all right, I'll stop wish, talking about wish it. Wish granted. Uh, <laughs> Tottenham, yeah, I, you would have to say it was Tottenham. And apparently, I found a story on that. You asked me to find some, try to find some funny shit from the world of football. I couldn't really find anything because of the international break. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really going on. Right. Um, but uh, apparently, Pochettino's met with Daniel Levy about his future. Oh, no That's shit. That's in the... That was in the paper talk, yeah. No shit. So the Tottenham players are supposedly bracing for a managerial change, although that was from the Daily Mail, who just throws darts at a board. So nah, very true. Yeah, one out of every 17 rumors is true, so you never know. Um, I mean, that could be the one. Who, Tottenham are in 14th. <laughs> who do you think makes the biggest drop? Um, I would probably have to say either Sheffield United or Bournemouth. Right. Simply because this is normally when Bournemouth decides to take their slide, right, and are shite for about two months. Um, Palace has already started that slide. That's true, but if asking the question from this morning, yeah, they're already in twelfth. I don't think yeah. they're going to go that much further no, down. No, no, they're going to hang right about th- where they are. Yeah, I think they're only going to drop maybe a place or two, maybe swap with Tottenham kind of right. thing, right, uh, for the time being. Um, and man- they're also getting past the hard part. They had four tough games in a row. This one against Liverpool, I think, is the last one, and then they're back to kind of playing people around them. Yeah, so I'm going to have to go with either Sheffield United or Bournemouth. Yeah. Because Sheffield United's already played most of the big six. Their December should be fairly easy. Yeah, one would one would think. So, well, relatively well, easy. Relatively easy in the regards of you have to play twice a week for four straight weeks, which yep. is pretty fucking tough. But you're more playing teams either around you or below you right. in terms of stature. Um, I wonder, I wonder if... Um, they're going to be able to hang with that. Like, are they prepared to play like the Burnleys of the world kind of thing, you know, or the or the Brightons and the the teams that are kind of more based around them in the table? Although, I mean, <clears throat> it's looking like they've probably already done enough. Yeah, no, you know? be, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're halfway to safety essentially. <laughs> All right, already. so cool. So, um, next question. Uh. What club is going to make the biggest move in the January transfer window? And the second follow-up to that is who do we think might sell? Um, so I think Tottenham will probably try to do something because they're languishing at the right. moment. And I don't foresee them doing anything major over the next couple months. I just think they have the most potential to as kind of a caveat follow-up to the last question. Right. They're going to need to do something or last season's Champions League finalists are going to find themselves outside of Europe completely. Yeah, very um, true. If they don't make a move. I also think the toxicity in that uh, dressing room is could be down to Christian Eriksen. Try to get try to get Eriksen out the door. Try to get him out the door and just try to hit reset on the on the dressing room. Try to get everybody back on side because something's not clicking. Right. Maybe Eric Dyer, who's been horrendous this season as compared to last. Um and then the World Cup last year and everything. He, ha- he hasn't been very good this season at all. Right. Uh, ever since he went down, I think it was an abdominal issue he had to have surgery on. Um, so, and then they've sold their best right back. They th- are now running with Serge Aurier, who's not great. Um, I think that Danny Rose doesn't even look like he wants to play football half the time. Right. So I think they'll be on the market for a new right back. I think they're going to have to find... And Dombele's kind of hit the ground running, kind of not. He's kind of, you know, been been hit or miss every game he's played. He hasn't really gone nuts. Um, I don't think he really has a very good supporting cast around him right now. I mean, Everybody's that's absolutely, kind of playing for themselves. Yeah, 100%. So they, they're going to have to do something to reinvigorate that team. Yeah. A, holding, a holding midfielder is very, very dependent on the pieces around him. No, yeah, absolutely. Because his job is to get in a tackle and to make make good passes. I mean, that being and, said, Harry Winks has been playing with him, and Harry mm-hmm. Winks scored a goal and, and created another for England this weekend. True. So he's not a bad player. They just haven't clicked yet, yeah. I think. It's I, just I, 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 they need to do something to reinvigorate that team. I think City um, will buy whatever pieces they need. If it's another center back, they will buy another center back. Yeah. If they think they need more strikers, they and they've will got the money to way overpay so for. So I I think by default they will be the team that ultimately does the most, and that move may only be one move, but it may be they'll a spend hundred, yeah a hundred million dollar center back right yeah. is what it may end up being and absolutely I, and I fully expect them to do that because 
you know, it, it's Pep. Pep wants to win everything. Pep's not happy with second place, and he's not going to stand for it. And you got to figure he's going to fucking push them as hard as he fucking can. I can't wait to live in a world where either Tyrone Mings, uh, Lascelles, or Johnny Evans is worth $100 million. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Tyrone Mings is worth every penny of every penny <laughs> and then some. He's just got that natural leadership about Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Like, but are you going to fit him? himself like, you know, someone no, you 100%. follow in everything. No, 100%. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is he going to fit into the city team that has the egos of Fernandinho, Sergio Aguero, oh, David no, Silva, Kevin De Bruyne? stay with Villa. No, I, no I, I completely agree he needs to stay where he yeah. is. But if they come searching with $100 million, mm. is Villa going to say no to him? Right. It won't be. Is dished. he going to say no and want to stay there? Absolutely. That's a. Mm. He could treble. <laughs> he could treble his wages. Yeah. And walk into probably two trophies this uh, year. Who do we? Who do we think is someone that's going to get sold within the league? Christian Eriksen, so, I've mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> for sure. Do you think Zaha? I think Zaha could try to push for it. Definitely depends if United comes with stupid money he's for no reason. Hasn't been doing particularly great. And no. And he, I think his head may still I be think turned he as well. Wants out. I think yep. he still very much wants out. That one would not surprise me at all. I'd agree with and, that. And and I also think uh, Palace probably thinks they're good enough to stay up if they lost him, and they could probably get a premium on him currently. I'd agree with that. <laughs> Excuse me. I worry about Lacazette and uh, Aubameyang if we keep going down the path we are. Oh yes, definitely. Definitely. Ask to move to a Champions League side. Yeah, could you blame him? Uh, so, um, which brings us to our final question. It's actually both of those guys are on my list. Um, what one player, if was lost to injury, would make the biggest impact on their club? I mean, it's Virgil van Dijk right off the jump. If yeah, Liverpool yeah, lost Virgil van Dijk, just, just, they'd be fucked. Do you want to just go down the league and name a player, and we'll sure. talk about the big ones? Sure. I mean, there's there's some teams, like, I mean... You know, they've already currently are missing it. It's like City's missing Laporte. Oh, we, we, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we felt it missing Jack and then missing yeah. uh yeah, it's Jack. Yeah. All right. So and let's if go. we lose Ming, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Let's go. Liverpool. It's it's Van Dyke. It's Van Dyke. It's Van Dyke. Even without Mo Salah earlier in the month. You could lose uh, Salah, you could lose Firmino, you could lose Mane, and you'd be perfectly fine. And last month they yeah. were without Salah for a while and still were winning games. So Liverpool's definitely Van Dyke. It's Van Although Dyke. We don't know how, how bad that would actually hurt them because they do have the greatest defender in the world beside Van Dyke. Dijon Lover. <laughs> uh, Leicester City, Jamie Vardy. Vardy. Hands down. Um, uh, the holding and midfielder. Wilf- Wilford and Didi. In Didi. That would yeah. hurt a lot, too. In Didi would be the one I would that say. That would hurt a lot, too. But I think Jamie Vardy's goals yeah. are massive. I think somebody in that team could do a serviceable job at defensive midfield. Yeah. Wouldn't be great. They might win every game 3-2. <laughs> But without Jamie Vardy's goals, I mean, who else is scoring consistently? Yeah. Center backs, if they lost somebody, you got West Morgan to plug and play. Right. And Absolutely. he'll be fine. So, 100%. Yeah. It would be Vardy. Yeah. Vardy Chelsea. and Didi. Uh Chelsea, I'm not so sure really anybody. Because if you think about it, it's a really young team, and there's just a lot of pieces to plug and play. If you asked me three weeks ago, I would have said Mason Mount. But yeah. now that Christian Pulisic has come on, he can play that number 10 role. Right. So I, I think even now Mason Mount's fine like you'd so, want to say Jorginho but then Conte or if you say Conte well then you say Jorginho like I mean right they've they've I I don't and they they were winning a bunch of games it, and Golo Conte is still not fully back from injury yet I mean, despite being to Frank uh Frank Lampard's uh, uh emotions um he was included in the Frank uh France squad if you have to say Conte. someone maybe Kappa the keeper. Well, he won't let you drop him. Yeah, so. precisely. <laughs> but I, I don't think they have that player because the team itself is so kind of vast yeah. and undefined uh-huh. that there's enough plug and play to put in True. the spot. So. Fair enough. City is Ederson and Laporte. Yeah, and we're seeing it right now. Yep. Uh, Sheffield United. I don't know enough of their players right, to really uh, say anything. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, Tussard. <laughs> uh, no, no, Tussard's Brighton. Um, <laughs> uh, the kid up front. Who's the one that keeps? Oh, Mousset. Mousset. Sorry, yeah. All All right. Right. but That's I really close. couldn't. I really couldn't say on anybody yeah. on them. Um, Arsenal. It doesn't matter who we pick. We all suck. It's Lacazette and Obama Yang. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely yeah, is. It's it's those two. Um, I would also say Guendouzi's having a phenomenal season. Uh, the way he's playing looks at times to be the only one that gives a shit. Yeah, he has um, he has improved quite a bit. I was not impressed with him at all last year, and he's actually played very very well. Yeah, he's the only one that seems to be trying. But if you lost him, you have Torreira. No, right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Being played out of position also, so you can't really see what he does properly. 
Uh, Manchester United. I think we saw it with um, Martial being out. They had yeah. no focal point to that attack at yeah. all and looked at sixes and sevens up front. Rashford or Martial, you need to have both. Yep, 100%. You can't have one or the other. If it's only one, the other one's useless. 100%. And Wolves, I got to go straight away with Raul Jimenez. Oh, it's Jimenez. It's Jimenez. Uh, Bournemouth. Um, you can be Nathan fun. Ake. Uh, I mean, he, he's the glue that holds that team together, in my opinion. I'd say probably um, Wilson, the loney. Harry Wilson, yeah. Ryan Frazier as well with yeah. his assists. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, there's a few in that team that th- again, that's a team that's got a, it's it's more a sum of its own. A, a big a, the sum yeah. of its parts is greater than the parts themselves. Yeah, precisely. They are greater than the sum they, of their parts. They that's have the a lot saying. of they have a lot of plug and play. <laughs> yeah, uh, Burnley. Uh, for me, you got to say Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, yeah. Because Ben Mee's bound to gaff that anyway. Guy's a beast. Yeah. Tchaikovsky's yeah. awesome. Because if you're missing um, Barnes, you have Woods. If you're missing Woods, you have Barnes. Like, right. And, you know, um, McNeil, you got Jeff Hendrick. And you've if, got uh, Jay Rodriguez. So you do have a little bit of a creative presence anyway. You got if, Aaron Lennon. If Pope went down, I mean, it, you got Hart. I mean, who is uh, great, <laughs> but he's. Right. Serviceable. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you. It's not like Roberto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. So I, I, I got to go with Tchaikovsky. And there's talk of him getting an England call-up as well. Yeah, which deserved. I, th- I think should happen. Deserved. Uh, Brighton. Uh, I would say Troussard. You already saw it. He was injured early on, and th- when he came back, he's made an impact. He's, yeah. scored, he's been scoring goals for him. He, w- he widens them as a team mm-hmm. and offers pace on the wings, uh, which is something Brighton's never had. So yeah, and I, he's, I would he's huge. say equally Connolly because of the work rate uh, and the, the, the passing and finishing that he has, mm-hmm. uh, that ability. He's created goals for Troussard um, and also received uh, passes from Troussard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, I think we've seen uh, them be without Dunk or Duffy at one time or another, they and that do. defense is so well drilled, it's plug and play yep. back there. So cool. I think they could do without either one. All right, who's next? Uh, Crystal Palace. Zaha. Zaha. Uh, Newcastle. <laughs> Fucking cares. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, on a serious, I would probably say uh, it'd be Al Marone, which we had an email about also. Oh, okay. Uh, Keith Kern, guy from... Um, from uh, Toon Army Baltimore. Oh, very cool. Yeah, he, um, it's somewhere. He's asked me, where do we think Al Marone, uh should play? <laughs> what If we were, what's his name? Uh, Bruce. Here we go. If you were Steve Bruce, how would you play Miguel Almarone to best effect? How would you try to help the front three actually score? I'd still keep him on the wing. That's where he's most useful. But we can, let's stick to topic. We can talk about that a little bit more in a second. But okay, sounds good. I um, would I would have said um, the... Uh, um, the holding midfielder, the older brother. Why am Sean I Longstaff. Is, Longstaff, yeah. yeah. I would say Longstaff right now is currently the one you need. Uh, Twatnam. Um, God. Harry Kane. Kane. Terry, yeah, it has probably to be Harry. Harry. Without his goal so far this season, they'd be nowhere. Yeah. Everton. We're already kind of missing him. Andres, Andres Gomez. We're going to find out, yeah. Yeah, yeah Andres, Andres Gomez. Gomez. I agree, because now you have to put Schneiderlin in, yeah. and you could be fucked. Uh him, Richarlison as well is pretty irreplaceable now. Everton lost all their handsome. That's yeah. true. Yeah, lost so much. And the other thing is, we don't know about Moise Ken. We don't know if we can live without Richarlison there because Moise Ken hasn't played yet. True. For Very real. true. All right. Uh, West Ham. Uh, Fabianski. It's, it's Fabianski. We've already seen that right now. 100%. Beyond that, if they lost Yarmolenko, I'd be worried about relegation. Hey, 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 hey. Chris said it was too shameful to talk about. Right. Stop it. Uh, Aston Villa, it's Jack Relish. Yeah. yeah, it's Grealish. It's, it's Captain Villa yeah, for me. It is. We, we felt that we felt losing him, and hopefully his uh, calf. It's not anything super serious. I don't be know. Back. Those things are like bowling balls. Oh, I know. So I don't know how that gets mm. hurt. Yeah, it's like a supernova. All right, next up, <laughs> uh, Watford. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Decore. I think they're already. Mis- yeah, I mean, of the current it, squad, Decore. but I think Dini is already gone. Yeah, it's Decore. Dini's their emotional leader. Dini's their. They're everything. Fat Drake. Yep. So they're already without him. I would go with Decore now. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. He kind of holds it all together in the middle. Southampton, I think there's two. Uh, James Ward-Prowse and mm-hmm. uh, Pierre-Emile uh, Hoiberg. Oh, yeah. That without those two. Viking in the back. Yeah. Without those two, there's nobody to get the ball to Danny Ings. Yeah. Or, or um, 
Che Adams. Che yeah. Adams. Yeah. Not that he's going to do anything with it anyway. Well, he hasn't even been playing. He's been on the bench. Well, yeah, good, because for the first six games, he sucked. Yeah. Uh, and Norwich, it has to be Team Mapuki. Yeah, it's Pookie. Well, Despite also, him being shite for the last couple weeks. I would say it's also the fact that they're currently down um, all their center backs. They're on like their fifth and sixth string center yeah. backs currently. Yeah, <laughs> like 16 year olds yeah, back there. So that's pretty <laughs> bad there. So. Yeah. Um, all right, so that's cool. That's all of our questions. Um, well, I just got a question in the uh, the DUFC, uh, the football club page, uh, asking if you were dancing like a chicken yet. No, not yet. But that is coming in every week. Yes, yes. In fact, he does do the chicken dance. Go not- do live this week from DUFC while he does it. Okay, I will. Okay. Um, and before I get to Taylor's question, I just want to go back to uh, Paul from Houston. I looked up another stat while I was sitting here listening to Graham with his pro arsenal agenda. And by the way... Head to head throughout the entire history of Villa and the Wolves, we have won out of 127 games. We've won 55. We've only lost 40, and we've drawn 32. So suck it, Paul. <laughs> now, uh, so suck it. <laughs> so I do have a question from Taylor. Okay, I'm sorry, Taylor. Or Taylor <laughs> I had to say his name correctly. Uh, it goes, uh, "Hey, boys." I got a little fun question. How did each one of you come to support your clubs? Sam, would you like to go first? Yeah. Um, so I've played football my whole life uh, and decided I was a DC United fan, I guess you'd say, but I couldn't even watch that on TV here for real back in the day uh, while they were winning their titles. Um, so I said I'd follow whatever. I really wanted to get into English football, and I said I'd support whichever team I saw first that played the right way. And I had seen Tottenham had come over uh, and play DC United. And I went to that game with somebody I worked with at the time. And there was, uh, this is in retrospect, there was an unnatural hatred I had for them. Uh, and there really was. I was cursing them to the, the point where an elderly English gentleman dumped a beer on my head. And I was 14 years old. <laughs> it happened. Um, but so my parents, I got lucky, subscribed to Fox Sports World. Uh, which was the first international sports mm-hmm. cable channel, right, that that we could get. Um, and I said, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And it was Arsenal against Portsmouth. Um, I don't remember the exact year, but I want to say it was like 2001, because I think it's been about 18 years. Thierry Henry had a hat trick, uh, and Robert Perez scored the other goal, and we walked out of there 4-1 winners. Oh. And um, it was brilliant. Ball didn't leave the floor for a good five, six minutes at times. Hmm. So uh, I said, this is it. I dove all in with my old, you know, still dial up internet at that point, I think. Uh, I researched everything I could get my hands on about Arsenal, learned everything I had to learn, learned chants, learned history, learned everything. And I was all in. And I've never looked back. Very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. Um, for me, uh, played soccer my whole life. Uh, played from when I was five. I started playing keeper at 15. So I've always had an infinity towards goalkeepers. And, uh, you know, knew a little bit about the English Premier League, but really didn't keep up on it very much. In fact, I'm later to the dance than you are, Sam. I came to it later than you. Um, <clears throat> but the one thing I remembered was ESPN story on Tim Howard. Um and the struggles that he had had with Tourette's, and also the uh, fight that he had with the um, Manchester when he was with Manchester United, the uh, the press was pretty unbearing on him. Um, back in that time, you could still use like the R word and it'd be okay, um, and they would sit there and talk about that, like to say that he was you know mentally handicapped because of his Tourette's that he was retarded yeah. for pe- for younger yeah. people that don't know what the R word is right. we're not saying it this is educational yeah. yeah that's what they would say so um now uh i saw that piece and he had uh just defeated his former club manchester united in the fa cup semifinals and it was <clears throat> he saved two penalty kicks in that onto the win and they were going to be playing in the uh fa cup final against chelsea um that i then watched that game and then you know they lost they scored they actually scored the fastest goal in fa cup history they scored uh um uh saha scored in the uh, first 20 seconds 
but uh, ultimately they lost two to one to Chelsea. Uh, the next year had Fox uh, soccer and uh, started to kind of just watching the team little by little. In fact, <coughs> one of the first games I watched was an opener with you with against Arsenal where you beat the ever loving shit out of us. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember that. And that the, was that one of the days? Was that the day that you brought Tegan? No, 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 no that be, was the that was the one-one well draw. That. that was the one-one draw That's with right. yeah, yeah. But um, uh, Delafeu late, like yes. eighty-eight minutes or something. Yep, yep. Yeah, Near I post. Remember the fucking asshole. Past old Walt, <laughs> um, smoking in the showers. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I started watching Everton, and by the end of the season, you know that team was David Moyes managed, and he called it the People's Club, and it just had this very blue-collar worker feel to it, and you'd have Timmy Cahill littlest guy on the field scoring every single time with his head and boxing the flag in the corner and you know guys like uh Jagielka and Arteta and and uh Phil Neville and of course Leighton Baines and Stephen Pinar and just by by the end of the season I was full blown in love with Everton and I've been a fan ever since so that should answer the question there you go all right um did we want to how do we deploy Amarone <laughs> go ahead and talk about it right I now I think you could do with him as a number 10 cuz he's so quick I think that really hinders you on the opposite side, though. Mm -hmm. um, but if you give him a free roll, he can truly utilize his pace. And his passing has been very good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been his finishing that's been called into question, obviously, with him not registering a goal yet uh, for the Magpies. But he does have um, he does have a, a handful of hockey assists. I mean, a lot of his passes open up the game for other players. Yeah. Now, that being said, you have the big, strong uh, Jolinton up front. And then on the wings, you'd have Saint Maximon and Almiron, and I think they would just wreak havoc, uh, running rings around uh, outside defenders as they have really right. over the last few weeks. It just getting the and ball. I was corrected by Mister Kern. I believe it was again. In fact, it was not for fucking ever that uh, Newcastle had won back to back games. It was in week thirty four and thirty five of last season. Yeah, but it still feels uh, like so forever. in April. Yeah, wow. um, but so that's how I would do it. Um, do you I already have told any... you I'd keep him to the wing. Yeah, I, I think you have to take advantage of his speed. And Absolutely, and eventually the the goals and assists will come. I mean, it's just it literally is just a matter of time. Yeah. It's time to tell you what little we know. It is prediction time. So Pat's back to even. Uh, I'm down minus four twenty three, and Graham, you're at uh, minus um, the national debt. Fuck off. It's only like a grand and two hundred. All right, so um, yeah, well, yeah, that's also uh, an odd way to say that. Twelve hundred dollars. Uh, Eleven eighty-five. Uh, yeah, see, eleven eighty-five. Okay, so uh, what? That shit... fifteen-dollar win came in handy. So, what <laughs> shit losing pick do you have for us today? Uh, so you know what I'm gonna do? Little Sam's shit bet of the week. Uh, here we go, live voice actor here. I'm not paying you for that. <sighs> I didn't have time to do this here, but here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do another parlay, but it's just going to be a straight win on games, right? Okay. We're going to do Burnley to beat Watford away. Okay. Okay. And there was another one that I was looking at, and now I can't find it. Where is Here it is. Villa beating here Newcastle. Here it is. Villa winning at Newcastle. Yeah. Uh, so Villa's. No, I'm sorry. You're at home. So uh, Villa home win over Newcastle, and a Burnley win at Watford. Win I think. at Watford away win. Yeah. Okay. That's plus, like a very good bet, Graham. Plus six fourteen. I support that bet fully. Plus six fourteen. And if you hit that, you will still be behind me. That's fine. Until you lose. No, because if I lose, I'd only be at minus five. You'd be at minus at plus five. Okay, or no, not plus five. I'd be at minus five and change. It yeah. would. De it depends on the change part, because I'm eleven eighty five, right? Yeah. I'd be five twenty three. Eighty three. I'd be five seventy nine. I'd still be behind you. And that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for our degenerate gambling friend Pat's pick of the week. Well, it's nice to be even, Steven, and after this week, I'll be up 100 bucks. Saturday, we have Manchester City hosting Chelsea, and I do see an easy pick here. And no, I'm not taking City to win. What I'm going to go for, uh, but that is at a minus 250, so he doesn't want to mess with that. He goes, I'm taking the under, and right now it's 3.5 at minus 127, and I expect that that number will go up. 
I'll risk the 127 to win 100 here. These two teams haven't gone over three goals in the last five matches. Playing the under is never fun, but it can be profitable. I expect Man City to go up early, hopefully play tight, and protect the lead. See you next week when I have to pick the match of the year, Watford at Southampton. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking quality. Yeah, something he's been doing pretty regularly is picking whatever the primetime game is on Saturday. Fucking quality. He's been pretty much sticking to that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, now the big thing, big thing now is now we're going to talk about winners because, you know, I pick fucking winners. So... Big Sam's Lock of the Week. 20% of the time, it works 100% of the motherfucking time. And that's why you have a golf MVP trophy sitting in front of you. I do not mock my MVP-ness. <laughs> <laughs> do Which does not naturally get bigger. <laughs> um, yes. Very simple. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Mute button. Hit it. Uh, this week, I am taking Jamie F. and Vardy to score against Brighton, plus 112. Uh, the game, this game's going to have goals. Um, it's funny, the over-under on this is point to, is 2.5. Um, I'd also would I'd take the uh, over on that, too. I'm not going to. I'm just going to stick with Vardy to score. But uh, there's going to be goals in that game. Those two teams play pretty open. And even though Brighton's a tighter defense, I think... I think that Lester's going to make them pay. So uh, definitely Vardy to score, plus 112, slowly but surely chipping away at my lead. But now, you know, Mel, if we gave you that, that would be enough, wouldn't it? Am I allowed to unhit the mute button? You're allowed to talk. It would be enough, right? I mean, I'd be satisfied for once. Uh Uh-huh. But that's not what we do. No, we've got more. Here, here. At the Drunkard United Football Show, we strive to give you more. We give you Kitty the fucking chicken! (laughs) All right, so everybody in the DU football page is getting treated to Sam's chicken dance, which does happen every single week. So while he's dancing it out, I just want to let you all know that we're worried about Kitty. Uh, We got your uh, offers to help her out of her debts. But fortunately, she had a good weekend with college football and was able to bet herself out of the hole. Oh, thank goodness. I was afraid she was going to be a fryer for sure. I hope that video ended before I just ripped the fart. (laughs) But the music's still going. So this week, I gave Kitty the Lone Sunday match where Man U heads to... Now, (laughs) I was losing it on that one because I have a love for a certain fan out there. Now, Kitty was very excited to talk about her weekend with none other than Harry Styles. Apparently, uh, she got on the train, went up to New York City, and was hanging out backstage with Star Night Live. No shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. He hosted this weekend. Oh, yeah. There's a picture of her sitting on Colin Jost's lap and uh, Michael Che with a pair of knife and fork trying to find some salt and pepper. Fuck you, Che. Yeah, it was it was pretty rough for a moment there. But uh, Stay away fact, from my chicken, Jost. In fact, the last sketch, I think she influenced the music they used for it. Oh, the funeral, the yeah, funeral with the funeral house DJs music. And the house music. Yeah, Very I think nice. Kenny was actually, uh, I could have sworn I saw a little dash of feather as she was spinning the tracks for that. Ah. So clearly, since Styles is a Man U fan, Kitty's picking Man U for the win. There we go. Very good. All right, people, as always, remember to gamble responsibly and legally. Uh, oh, and, and oh, I already did it. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're off the hook this week. <laughs> We fucking lost to like a with two minutes left. Yeah, that was a tough one. Running off the post, it was fucking ridiculous. Uh, we played a good game. We hit the post a few times. Um, played some decent football, to be honest. Uh, Mel, Mel, I, was, I recorded quite a bit of it. Yeah, you did. Somebody, she, somebody, was it Alan that made a mention that me running down the field looked so painful every time I ran down yeah. the field? Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. What a dick. I did get your slide <laughs> tackle in there though. Oh, when you just flat out tackled somebody like like. 
oh, hammered him. In the middle of the field? I, I, I actually actually turned to Mel and I said, please tell me you got that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on the audio as well. Good, so yeah. now people know. Um, you know I just uh, took a drag of my vape like I was satisfied with it. <laughs> pull, working in a few new people as well to the team. and Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Yeah, we'll be fine. We played well. They were a lot younger than us. Yeah, they I were just um, fast. Got Houston yelling at the ref. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like to yell at the ref. Good. How That's many times did you go live from there? Uh, twice. Okay. Twice. I didn't see the second. I might have to look at the other the one. The second one is in the football club, and it's the last five <laughs> minutes of the game. And the first one is the first ten minutes of the second half of the game. Oh, sweet. I'm going to have to go see my tackle again. Yeah. So. I didn't know you got that. Oh, st- stop that, rubbing that yourself. That makes Sam. me happy. Stop rubbing yourself. Saying nah, ain't gonna yeah. be pouring tonight, buddy. Yeah, it's rubbing. gonna be that. <laughs> you just act like somebody. <laughs> over. Well, uh, that about wraps wraps it up, boys and girls. Uh, Sammy, any parting words? <laughs> yeah, I do. Real quick, um, for all the bullshit that we've experienced over the last couple of months with the racism we've brought up in the ugly side of football, I did want to give a shout out to uh, the Kosovoians. Okay, Kosovans. Uh. Kosovans. Let's say Kosovans. All right. When England landed there, there was a We Are Together sign. Um, there was St. George's uh, crosses all over. Um, they welcomed England tremendously uh, when they came for the Euro 2020 qualifier. Uh, that actually, uh, England won 4 0 and they clinched in stadium. They were waving England flags. And they said, while we were experiencing genocide, you stood by our side. So it's time for us to stand by yours. Oh, very cool. And it was a very family-friendly, happy atmosphere uh, in the stadium, on the streets. By all accounts, everything was brilliant and fucking well done to them. Yeah. Hung banners up outside the the airport, had, you know, St. George's crosses all over the place. Um, And after the recent racism that Raheem Sterling, Tyrone Mings, and and a few others that experienced in Bulgaria, amongst other places... Um, Kosovo took it, went out of their way and took it upon themselves to make England feel very welcome. And I just want a, a massive, massive respect to them uh, for what they did because they were not knowing they were going to get beat. It was a 5 3 barn burner at Wembley. Right. So at home, you'd think maybe we could do something, but they didn't walk into a hostile environment. England walked into a very fun environment. And that's what football's about. Right. Um, and and it's the universal language of the world, and it was it was wonderful to see. And uh, for all the shit that's been going on, I had to mention the other side of the yin yang. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Very good to hear. So uh, thank you very much for joining us, boys and girls. Uh, up next is injury time. Just another show where we uh, preview the weekend's games. You want to find out a little bit more about that? Go to our uh, Patreon, and uh, you can find all the details there. So uh, www.patreon.com backslash du football show very good so till next week everybody I heard you say Canadian. Yeah, I always say Canadian.